Hi and welcome to this advanced tutorial on OmniTile Standalone, which is about creating kitchen tiles similar to this one in this example image. So I'd like to recreate this material for 3D and uh, of course I could do this in Photoshop and draw all the lines and fill these patterns, but it's less flexible and then I still have to do all the different layers for the 3D material. So a much easier alternative is to use OmniTiles and let's jump right in. First thing we need to do is to load a pattern and luckily we have a similar pattern in the library already. It's called Illusion 1, so let's load this one. And if I open the preview I already see the different shape colors of the shapes that have been created in this pattern. And if I switch to Edge I'll, I can see the edges. So what do we want to do? We want to have different diffuse maps similar to the colors here and for this we'll open the texture manager and add different maps to the diffuse channel in this case. We have a library of textures of over two and a half thousand textures and one folder contains RAL colors. So I'll start with the yellow ones. Let's see yellow something like this or this maybe I think I'll take this one and uh, then we have some turkeys which could be in the blue tones folder so maybe let's see or in the green one yeah probably something like this I guess Okay, so next we have some dark blue, which could be this. Yeah, I'll, t I'll take this one for now. And then we have some white and gray colors. So let's take a white one, which could be maybe this one. And some different gray tones. And see maybe this one and this one and this one okay so now we have a few different colors uh, loaded and what we see here is a random dis distribution of these these uh, colors bit color bitmaps in the pattern if I increase the tiling these are distributed randomly and we're, we're suddenly somewhere but the distribution is not like we want it to be because there are too many yellow maps distributed here and this is where the random importance mode and the random by unique first mode comes into place and this is used to change the importance um, of how many times a certain bitmap appears in the pattern so the gray ones and white ones appear much more often than the other ones. So I'll increase the number of white ones to five, for example, and you immediately see the result. And then maybe the gray ones to two, and maybe even more white ones, and more gray ones. And then we're somewhere near something we'd like to have. We might still have to eliminate the dark one. So let's take that away. Oh no, that was the right one. That's this one. And I think that's pretty near what we want to have. So let's see how that looks in 3D. I'll take a 3D plane. And now I would like to set up... Oh, let's do a save first. Save preset. Kitchen tiles. Okay, so first I'd like to set up the material. And uh, I'll turn down the metallic and then I'll choose the edge map as the height map. This is to get some basically adjustment here on the sides and to see the edges more clearly. 
Um, of course, I'd like to have the black edges, the mortar in between, but this is something I'll do in Photoshop a little bit later. Because we have the edge map. Um, if I switch to edge map here, actually, this seems to be a bug, but it should be the ed edge map which I'm seeing here. So this is the one that I need. And right now, if I zoom in, it still is a little bit pixely. And this is because I have, I'm having a 1K preview resolution. If I increase this, the preview gets better. Okay, so back to the plane. And let's go back to, um, sorry, to diffuse. And now we already have something um, which is quite nice, but it doesn't really have much um, of a reflection in there. So I'd like to add a little bit of, of randomization on on the, the roughness. And this is done by adding roughness match, ma maps. So I'll click add and we have some surface maps included in the library, which can be found here and I'll take the grunge maps, well, let's see, maybe scratch maps. Let's try those. I'll open those. And now if I set these up in the roughness channel, we're getting somewhere, which is a little bit more interesting than what we've seen before. So of course this could also be used as a as a channel as a, a map for the floor or something, but you, you see what I mean. Now I'd like the UV map um, of these maps. Uh, the white uh, the color maps are all flat flat basically, but the other ones are um, a little bit too big for this. So I'll increase the overall UV size, and then I do some little bit of randomization like UV scaling, UV rotation, and maybe some shifts, UV shift, and then random flipping and random 90 degree rotation. Now I can still change U and you'll see some more randomization here, but I'll leave it as it is because I will really want to be somewhere nearby what I have in this. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that, that's basically it. Uh, now we can see how this looks in different lighting conditions, like for example in the studio. And uh, we have, have some different light reflections here. And uh, let's keep it this way. And I'll do another save, save preset. And now I'd like to render those out because I would like to use those in a 3D application. Um, of course, I can still change the tiling here if I have a bit larger surface. Um, maybe let's use this, save, and then go to render. And I will render out 4K maps. But since I want to render those and, and also add the edge map, I'm going to Photoshop directly. I've already set this up and you can see how, how this can be set up, the Photoshop connection, in another tutorial. So um, let me hit render and hope that everything goes well and we'll end up with the maps here. Yeah, here we go. So this is the map. And then in addition, we're getting the surface map and the edge map. And the edge map is the one that I really would like to use because if I copy this one over this and then change the, the mode, then I can very easily get the edges that I want. So that's basically is now I, I can resave it. I can even add some dirt from this if I want to copy and then let's use darken and then change the fill. This is how you can add a little bit of non-linearity. Yeah, and that's basically it. So let's zoom out. Here we go. This is our map. I can save it and use it in any 3D application. All right, so that's it. I hope you like it. 
If you have any suggestions, ideas or something else, just let us know. Um, if you haven't tried OmniTiles, feel free to download the demo. It includes all of the library. It just has a limitation on 512 by 512 on rendering the maps. But other than that, you have 15 days to try out everything and see if this is this helps you to create better materials. Okay, thank you for watching and see you soon.